If you decide to investigate a real estate investment trust, you ultimately want to estimate the intrinsic value. What is its true worth? And compare that to the market price. So let's talk about a couple of ways to do that. One approach is to calculate the net asset value, and that's its assets minus liabilities divided by the number of shares outstanding. So that NAV or net asset value gives you the per share value based on the value of the assets. Another way to do it is doing a discounted cash flow approach. And the cash flow that you typically want to value is the funds from operations, which is called the FFO. Or you could do the AFFO, which takes the funds from operations and subtracts off the CapEx. So let's take a look at how to get some of this information in Capital IQ in order to get a valuation. Let me pick one. I'm going to go to the Capital IQ website and I'll pull up part hotels and restaurants. The first thing that you want to look at is this industry specific information because once you go here it is going to give you the funds from operations and you can see that this one has increased dramatically. I don't know exactly what's going on with this but something unusual right because if you look at the net income you can see it's grown from 144 million to 2 billion 625 so this would be a really interesting one to investigate. The FFO has gone up tremendously, of course. It's got CapEx here. Um, the CapEx is negative for some reason, which is very unusual also. Um, and it's got adjusted funds from operation of 596. So you know this is, this is clearly one you'd want to scratch your head and, and just dive into and, and try and figure out what's going on associated with it. Um, it's got the FFO, the AFFO here. Of course, what you're trying to figure out is, is this sustainable? I mean, it's got this insane increase in FFO, but what you want to do is take a look at what analysts are saying about that. So I clicked on CIQ estimates, and we can go down here and look at the FFO, and you can see that for 2016, it was $2.58 per share is 278 for two, um, 2017 and it's expected to remain stable so you're not actually seeing that change here in terms of the FFO per share um, you can look at the adjusted FFO and it's pretty stable as well $2.09 for 2016 $2 for 2017 $2.07 for 2018, so it's not actually expected to change very much. Another thing you can look at is what management is saying. So I clicked on the guidance under estimates, and they will give you a range that they expect for the FFO and the AFFO. Um, here you can see that on November 1st, 2018, they came out and gave the market some guidance in terms of an earnings call. So I would look into there and try and figure out what's going on with this company as well. Um, you can see that well, when I look at the income statement, the total revenue has actually been pretty stable, which is, which is interesting. And so here you can see that they've got this huge increase in FFO. And that has got to be all driven from um, something unusual that happened with the tax um, income tax expense. And I suspect that what actually happened was that 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 anomalous number has to do with the new tax law that was passed in uh, at the end of 2017. And in fact, if I drill down on this, I bet I could figure that that, that out. So I really like this example because this showing you sort of my thinking in real time about what's going on here, why this is interesting. Um, they've got this income tax benefit. Do they explain it at all? I'm trying to figure out if they say anything about it. I mean, I'm sure they must somewhere in the financial statements because in drilling down here, you can see that it's uh, 
giving you the actual filing that the company has. They operate as a real estate um, investment trust. They had some significant changes here in terms of a spinoff. I suspect that that had a huge effect on the taxes. And I can't imagine that this um, you know, t income tax benefit is something that's going to reoccur on a regular basis. So um, when you look at the FFO, just as, as it's shown here on Capital IQ, and the net income as well, right? I mean, it's just this nutty increase, but that's not something that you would see continue. So an equity analyst wouldn't want to use that in their forecast in order to uh, determine those future cash flows that investors can expect. So what I've tried to do is show you those, those uh, key tabs to click on in order to get information. You want to go to that industry specific to get the FFO. You would like to go to CIQ estimates to see what analysts are projecting for future FFO and also take a look at guidance and see what management is saying about that. So I hope that's helpful in allowing you to get some key information in order to do a valuation of a REIT.